So, happy Monday. I'm still basking in the glow of last Tuesday's election repudiation of left-wing progressive wokeism and inflationary spending and high taxes and defund the police and an open civ border and no parents in schools. Actually, my friend James Carville explains what happened best. Take a listen to this. Stupid wokeness. All right, you don't, don't just look at Virginia and New Jersey. Look at Long Island. Look at Buffalo. Look at Minneapolis. Even look at Seattle, Washington. I mean, just defund the police lunacy to take Abraham Lincoln's name off of schools. It's just really a, have a suppressive effect all across the country. The Democrats, some of these people need to go to a woke detox center or something. <laughs> a woke detox center has got that right. Look, I do have a bit of a headache from the infrastructure vote. That thing was taken last Friday. I was suspended in air. I was flying home from Florida to New York, so I couldn't do anything about it. But not to belabor that point. The main chance here is still save America, kill the bill, the big bill, the social spending, Green New Deal, tax hike bill. And I gave a talk to a business group today and outlined a few key points I'm going to share with you. First of all, I think these are all easy common sense. Number one, we need more energy, not less. Last Thursday, OPEC Plus, that includes Russia, denied the U.S. request for more oil production. Incredible. When asked about her solution for that, our energy secretary at first giggled. That is not good on about five different levels. Now, here's the deal. We're already two million uh, oil barrels per day short from the pre-pandemic high, which was about 13 million. That's because and now we've been settling down at only 11 million during the pandemic and since the pandemic basically ended. They have not picked up production and investment. That's because the administration's Green New Deal policies is bullying the entire fossil fuel industry. If you put those two million barrels back on the market, you'd have a lot lower gasoline prices. Trust me on this. And by the way, the U.S. has the best carbon emission record in the advanced world. Because of nat gas and other improvements, spending $550 billion, okay, $550 billion in this bill, and Lord knows how many regulations and taxes to kill fossil fuels is absolutely nuts. We need more energy from all sources. And I'll tell you, next 50 years, nat gas and nuclear are going to be the energy drivers. No matter what the little Biden greenies say, that's going to be it. Trust me on this. And we should be going there right now. We need more energy for growth. Second, stop punishing success. All these tax hikes to pay for unnecessary and counterproductive social spending are aimed at workers, producers, and investors. That's right. This tax hike is sheer lunacy. Look, think of it this way. Just common sense. You want a good paying job. You need a strong business with plenty of profits to sustain it. You want to expand the business or even start a new one. Well, you're going to need some seed corn from investors. And, of course, they're going to want a good after-tax return. This is just common sense. The middle-class workforce and their families and minority groups will suffer the most from these proposed tax hikes. It's that simple. No profits, no business, no employment, no wage hikes. As Ed Yardeni has written, progressives hate profits. But I've chimed in, profits are the mother's milk of stocks and the lifeblood of the economy. You destroy profits, you're going to destroy the economy. Now, third point, America has got to go back to work. We've made good progress as the pandemic becomes less of an obstacle. We've got the unemployment down to 4.6%. But Joe Manchin is right. The government must never cut the link between generous benefits and the work needed to qualify for them. Ben Carson just put it well in an op-ed piece in the journal. Americans believe in the safety net, he said, not the safety hammock. Arthur Brooks used to run AEI, put it well. Vocation is essential to the American ideal. And as my old boss Ronald Reagan said, the best social pro program is a job. Now, all these emergency social spending plans, they should be ended. Why? Because the emergency is ended. They were meant to be temporary, not permanent. And certainly not permanent with no workfare provisions. 
And then speaking of ending the emergency, the Federal Reserve comes into play. Their money creation was aimed at the virus emergency. But now they should pull back because the emergency is over. Finally tonight, yes, I'm calling for some new set of policies. I want U.S. growth and prosperity, and I want it to spread all around the world. I am a growth guy. What we're going to need is lower taxes and more energy. Okay, not higher taxes and less energy. We need lower taxes and regs, and we need more energy. That is a combination for economic growth. And then let's substitute the successes of the free enterprise capitalism for all the failures of big government socialism. Let's get all of America working. Actually, you know what's coming. Save America. Kill the bill. That's my riff.